So today we will talk about the optimization of 2D and color Doppler in fetal echocardiography. And, and the second question is, do you need a high-end machine to do a fetal echocardiography? So, so first, first we will go through the optimization of the 2D and then color Doppler. So a good image is requisite of a precise diagnosis and a good image is job done. So, so we can buy a good machine. We can call an application specialist and he sets the presets for us and we can use that presets. But the, or we can adjust it ourselves. So presets are always individual. So we have our own perception of an image. So we can, we must know how to do the presets of an image and we must understand what's behind the buttons in a machine. And a good preset has a major contribution to a precise diagnosis and it saves a lot of time. If we keep a preset for a second trimester ultrasound, third trimester ultrasound, first trimester fetal echo, then it saves us a lot of time. You don't have to always adjust the image. And we must take time to get a good image because the images we give to the patients are ultimate product we give to the patients and the doctors see that images. And so it's very important that we give the good images or videos to the patients. So there are, for tuning of fetal echo, the goals are increased contrast resolution because while we are doing the fetal ultrasound, so we need a lot of gray scales. But while doing a fetal echo, we need only the cavities, which are black, and the wall of the vessels and the cavity, but hard wall. And secondly, we need a high frame rate and zoom and magnification. These are, should be the three goals of tuning for the fetal echo. So increased contrast, contrast resolution is to improve the spatial resolution between the blood and cavities or vessels. So these are the parameters we use, the high frequency transducer, harmonic compound and the spectral reduction imaging, dynamic contrast, which gives us a contrast. While we're doing a fetal echo, we use, usually use the eight or nine. And while doing the fetal, fetal other organs, we do use usually the dynamic contrast around six or seven. We can use the gray map, which gives us a better contrast. And we can use the color thing if we are uh, used to that color tint maps. Secondly, Secondly, we need the high frame rate because of the fast motion of the heart. We need to decrease the motion of blood. Thus, all parameters are set to increase the frame rate. So we have to narrow the width beam, single focal zone that increases the heart frame rate, and we should include only the heart by adjusting the depth and the magnification. So this is the this, this is the unzoomed image. Just see how tiny the heart looks. And we want to move to that at the magnified image so that we can see the details of the heart. Even the endocardium and the myocardium, we can see. So while adjusting, uh, optimizing the, there are three steps. First is the selection of the transducer. Second, the architecture of the image. And third is the image setting. So uh, we can compare the transducer with the camera lenses. If we have multiple lenses, we can get always the better image. So nowadays, all the probes which are coming with the ultrasound machines are the broadband transducer. This gives, this combines several frequencies. So the best penetration and resolution we can get. So mostly there is, just we have seen that there is a 3.4 to 7 megahertz. So these are all nowadays probes are broadband. So, so this gives us a better resolution and the better penetration. Second, Second idea, idea for choosing a transducer is the resolution and the penetration. So, so highest frequency transducer should be chosen always and appropriate for a low BMI patient. If the patient is high BMI, then we'll choose the low frequency transducer and newer matrix probes gives us high resolution images with very good penetration. So these are we can see this is the done with a high, high BMI patient with one to six megahertz probe. Second is the low BMI patient with two to nine megahertz probe. And last one is the matrix probe, which is done with a 
very high frequency probe. And these are better probes. And always we can see that compare the three images, the last one is the better one. So now that technology has improved, so the image quality has also improved. So now we'll go through the steps to optimize our image in a black and white ultrasound because most of the Vitalico we do in a 2D mode. So we want to move from this first on the right side image to the last image, which is a magnified and the optimized image. So this is a wide angle unmagnified image. So it decreases the uh, window uh, angle of the image. So now the frame rate has increased to 47 frames per second. So, so we need to have a very high frequency because once we put the color Doppler, it decreases significantly, almost half to one third of the frame rate. If it goes below 20, we'll see the motion blur. So we have decreased the first, we have decreased the window, then we have magnified the image. This is also a magnified image. It's better to do the ultrasound by apical area. Because suppose baby is on the right side, so we can always move the probe towards the apex of the uh, apex of the heart, and yeah. thereby avoiding the leaves in the fetal leaves. So, so, and this is the fundamental image without any adjustment. Just see how grainy the image, and we are hardly differentiate between the wall and the cavity of the heart. So, so just, just switch on the harmonic; it clears the. Gravity, and we can also see the heart. Then we can add the sorry. Next, we have the SR CRI. So now the image is better. And now we have added the SRI also and the magnified the image. Now we can see the cavity clearly. We can see the walls of the interventricular wall, the lateral wall of the heart. And we can also review the uh, motion of the baby pulse. So uh, while by adjusting the image, we have moved from the 17 frame per second to 48 second per second, 48 frame per second. Now we'll go to the color and power Doppler second settings. Mainly, the, we adjust the color box, ERA, power, and the gain. These four things are needed to adjust the color box. So just see the color box is quite large. And so it's giving us a frame rate of 20, 20 frames per second. So we have decreased the box of the color to include only the area of interest. This gives us a frame rate of 20 second per frame per second. Now we can see the uh, color Doppler. Okay, this is the image with very low, low PRF. So we are very difficult to differentiate between the, uh, any color movement. We are it's aliasing. We are not able to see the valves also and the interventricular septum. So if we increase slightly, then even further we increase the PRA. Now the color is only restricted to the cavity. So now we can also see the movement of the, the movement of the blood flow through the valves. So this is the outflow tract also. Now the color is only restricted to the cavities of the fetal heart. So, so this, this is the image we want. So first we have to set the 2D mode, then we switch on the color Doppler, and then increase the PRF and set the gain and the power, make the color with limited to only the fetal cavities. So these are the images, just see only the lumen of the vessel is filled by the flow of the color and the wall of the vessel we can see clearly. This is the outflow track, we can also see the uh, superior vena cava. If we want to see the venous flow to the heart, we can see decrease the PRA and we can see the IVC and superior vena cover filling the ventricle. And if we want to see the pulmonary pulmonary veins, we can just use the low PRA and we can also use the power doctor. So to recap, we must choose the appropriate transducer. We should use the appropriate preset. We should use the high frame rate. Narrow the angle, reduce the depth, zoom the image so that the heart fills one third to one fourth of the display, and we can use the cine loop to analyze the cardiac and the valve motion. For AV valves and the semilunar valves, we should adjust the image of 2D fetal first, then activate the color Doppler knob, small color box, 
it increased the area, decreased the color, color persistence, and adjust the color gain. For the pulmonary vein, decrease the PRF, decrease the wall filter, increase the color gain, increase the persistence, and can use the power doctor. So next, the question is equipment. Do you need a high-end machine? Almost all mid and high-end machines have the option of Sinelu. You must have a HD zoom. You must have a high frame rate, and the resolution should be good. So, so, so nowadays the uh, high-end machines are has faster computers. They have high-end graphic card, LED monitor that decreases the high strain. Newer multiple newer softwares are there. So newer probes like Matrix and Electronics are there. So there are increased storage so that we can store the whole study in a ultrasound machine itself. So, so there is the ability to post-process the images. We can annotate and do the measurement later on. Yeah. There are radiant flow and slow flow, but which those are newer softwares. And there is increased sensitivity in color Doppler and 3D and 4D reconstruction are very helpful in some cases because we can store the 3D images. We can evaluate those later on. So this is a radiant flow. This gives us a depth and height of the color flow. So it's very new algorithm for the color Doppler. And what it does, it uh, gives us a very good margins of the flow and without any bleeding over the interventricular septum or the wall. Second is that just we can see, this is the radiant flow with power Doppler. And this is the outflow tech. We can have a 3D ultrasound also, so we can real time just see if we section a heart, what we can see. So it's for very good presentation. And this is a electronic uh, probe. So at the same time, real time, we can do at a 90 degree angle, any structure, cardiac structure. So this is a new software. We can assess function by new software, also the fetal heart quantification. So all the parameters of the function of the heart are available at a very I mean, a small two or three minutes. And so the query is, do you need a high-end machines? In my opinion, yes, it's needed, not for regular work. We can do any mid-level ultrasound, but if we want to go beyond the routine work, we need a very high-end machines. Thank you. Thank you very much.